Good afternoon, Honourable Senators. Thank you for inviting Canadian Students for Sensible Drug Policy here today to share some of our work and experiences with young people. I have worked with CSSDP for almost eight years and I'm currently the strategic advisor to our board and local chapters in addition to being a postdoctoral fellow at the BC Centre on Substance Use. Canadian Students for Sensible Drug Policy is a grassroots network of youth and students who are concerned about the impact drug policies can have on individuals, families and communities. Over the last two years, we've undertaken youth-focused initiatives on cannabis legalization, including a youth roundtable and submission based on this input to the Task Force on Cannabis Legalization and Regulation, presentations to various stakeholders, dialogues with youth, as well as meetings with local, provincial and federal governments. CSSDP recently, recently released a Sensible Youth Cannabis Education Toolkit, which outlines 10 guiding principles for drug education and includes a pull-away curriculum as part of a comprehensive approach. I have a copy here. I'd be happy to leave with the chair. Our efforts started because young people continue to be left out of the conversation regarding cannabis legalization in Canada, despite being central to the government's mandate of protecting children. Meaningful involvement of youth is critical to ensuring that we're using this opportunity to truly protect youth over and above simple restrictions. Considering that restrictions in and of themselves have never stopped young people from accessing or using cannabis, and that for many young people under the age of 18 or 19, cannabis will remain illegal, we must capitalize on this opportunity to divert young people from the criminal justice system and offer pragmatic education which is inclusive of both prevention and harm reduction in order to maximize effectiveness and protect all youth. Young people have expressed a variety of concerns when it comes to legalization, but the most important concern, and one we hear in every conversation that we have, is the worry that youth will continue to be disproportionately criminalized under a new regime. A public health approach to the regulation of cannabis requires more than a consideration of potential individual health harms, but speaks to the importance of treating drug use as a health is issue as opposed to a criminal violation, particularly when it comes to young Canadians. We believe the Cannabis Act, which does not attach criminal penalties to youth 12 to 17 for five grams of cannabis or less, is crucial to ensuring youth aren't worse off under legalization than they were under prohibition. We urge senators not to think of this as a possession allowance for young people, but rather a way to ensure that they do not enter a cycle of criminalization. Also consider that the alternative is to continue to criminalize and arrest youth, particularly minority, minority and indigenous young people who are most impacted by cannabis enforcement. To put this into context, young adults 18 to 25 have the highest number of drug-related arrests, followed by those who are 12 to 17 years old. A majority of these close uh, to 80% are for cannabis possession alone. This must remain front and center when we're talking about what it means to protect youth. Also consider that the highest youth rates are for those who are 18 to 25. Protecting young adults in this context also means moving this population away from the criminal justice system and the wider illegal drug market and providing an avenue for legal and regulated access to tested and properly labeled products which should be accompanied by education and harm reduction for all adults. We've also heard many youth continue to identify a range of concerns around current drug education. We know that drug education can be challenging because youth encompass a very diverse set of young people in Canada, so what works in one context may not necessarily work in another. The research tells us that authoritarian and fear-based approaches can alienate young people and undermine the credibility of educational efforts and balanced conversations. They also spoke often to the exaggeration of risks, which doesn't resonate with their experiences, and they often told us they felt it ignored any potential benefits, such as the medical uses and the medical cannabis system in Canada. Cannabis education has also often ignored any harm reduction information, which we believe is very critical to a comprehensive approach, as well as a very important part of equipping families in Canada to talk about cannabis with young people. An approach to prevention and education that focuses both on reducing the harms, as well as giving young people the tools to make informed choices, is increasingly recognized as a more realistic approach to drug education. Programs or resources which don't speak to the ways we can reduce the harms of youth may do a disservice to young people who may already be using or have tried cannabis. Reducing harms can still promote messaging around delaying the early onset of use and prevention, but without making that the sole focus. We know that some young people will experiment with cannabis regardless of the legal context, the messaging, or the resources available. 
While roughly 25% of young people under the age of 25 report using cannabis in the past 12 months, there really is a lot of variability in how that cannabis is being used. This number captures young people who have used once in the last year, but it also captures young people who have used once a week in the last year. What statistics do show us is that a majority of your youth who report using cannabis actually use it very infrequently, and as a result, are not likely to experience significant harms from their use. Of the 25% who report using cannabis in the last year, only 2.5% of those report using in ways which is considered high risk for severe health or other problems. Harm reduction information is essential to reducing the harms associated with the use of cannabis among some of these young people. The inclusion of youth in the design and implementation of drug and cannabis education will be critical to ensuring that this education resonates with their experiences and serves to meet young people where they're at. We currently see very mean, little meaningful inclusion of youth in drug education and drug policy more broadly. Even in the Senate, I would respectfully note that young people themselves have been largely absent in these discussions. I want to conclude by saying that young people have a right to honest drug education, and this is going to in turn impact how equipped they are to make choices around their health. If we want to truly protect young people, the legal regulation of cannabis is offering an opportunity for more pragmatic and balanced conversations. Youth-centered cannabis education must be thought of as a crucial health resource and will be how we protect young people by helping them navigate the changing legal landscape as well as their experiences with friends, family, and acquaintances. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here today and I look forward to any questions you might have. <laughs>